first guy we're going to talk about at quarterback, Kyler Murray at Pittsburgh. You like him all the way up at quarterback seven. The experts like him at 10. Yeah, I, I just love that. The fact that he hasn't really had a monster real life day and yet nope. still 18, 23 and 20 points in his first yeah. three games coming back. He still looks as mobile and agile as ever. The quarterback six and nine in his last couple of games in Pittsburgh. Yeah, they've been sneaky good against quarterback six fewest points allowed, but they've had faced very minimal competition. Brock Purdy was the QB 10 against them. CJ Stroud was the QB 10 against them. Really the only other top 10 quarterback they faced was Lamar. And he just had one of those classic days where Gus Edwards pounded for three touchdowns instead. So with those secondary injuries, I really think Kyler Murray could be set up for a decent day, at least another 20 or so fantasy points. I love the floor and the ceiling is also solid too. You also like Brock Purdy. You got him all the way up at QB5. The experts like him at seven, so you do like him slightly more. You're probably starting him if you got him regardless. But why are you a little higher on Purdy? On uh, Purdy? I mean, one, this is just the game. The, the Eagles versus the Niners. We might be getting a an NFC Championship preview right here. I can't wait to get there. But unlike last year's Eagles team, this defense is abysmal. We've seen it time and time again. Top three matchup for quarterbacks, the number one matchup for wide receivers. I think we got yet another shootout, just like we saw last week with the Bills and Eagles. That has another monster day written all over it. Purdy himself, 20-plus points in three of his last four games. He had that dud against Seattle because Christian McCaffrey, that's all you needed last week, and that was the ultimate run funnel defense. But we got the opposite here. Sure, I just called the Eagles' defense trash. I shouldn't have. Their secondary, their, their pass trash. defense is horrendous, but that D-line is absolutely ferocious. They are impossible to run on. So this is the opposite type of script where they're going to need to lean on Purdy. They're probably going to have to be putting back and forth points Time and time again, six of his last nine games have also been for 20 or more fantasy points and QB1 finishes. Just the definition of consistency and when he needs to have the ceiling, we've seen it come out time and time again. So I think this could be another one of those borderline top three games for Brock Purdy when the team needs him most. All right, let's move on to lower. Trevor Lawrence playing against yeah. Cincinnati. This could be a gross one. You actually do still like him at a start. You like him all the way up at eight. The experts like him at six. I, to me, both of those are too high, but go ahead. It's tricky, though, because he did have 32 and 26 fantasy points in his yeah. last two games. So maybe, just maybe, we saw last year he kind of hit this type of scorching finish. It did screech out at a certain point, though, too. And that's what I'm worried about, getting too high on the guy, given the track record this year. Before these last two games, and I, I won't take anything away from him. He's ran in rushing touchdowns. He's looked much better these last few. But before that, he hadn't hit 20 points all season. He had just three games in the top 12 in all of the nine games before that. None of them were higher than the QB8. So, yes, I get the recency. He has looked great. The team has looked much better. But I don't know if they're going to really need to lean on him against a Browning-led Bengals like they've had to these last couple of weeks. And I just don't know that I fully buy these last two compared to the track record we saw in those first nine. So I think everyone's getting a little too antsy here on Trevor Lawrence. Like You probably are starting him if you have him again. In a week like this where there's so many buys, I get it. But ultimately, if it's like Purdy or Trevor Lawrence – Purdy right now is ranked lower than Trevor Lawrence by the ECR, and I would at least at minimum have those two things flipped. No chance. Yeah. Uh, also, Russell Wilson going at the Texans in a game that we both declared is highly watchable. You got him at QB 13, two below the experts. Not much of a discrepancy on either of these guys, but with Russ, uh, he is on that kind of fringe of starting and not if you're just going by the rankings. So how come you're a tiny bit down on him? Yeah, it's one of those things where he has been just real life-wise – Really, really good. But that's also because they've kind of made him into this game manager where if they can run the ball, they will. And Houston is definitely much more of a run funnel defense than they are pass funnel. I do expect this to be more of the Javante Williams, like 18, 20 carry. Let's keep the rock out of C.J. Stroud's hands. Now, game flow could get away from him. If C.J. Stroud gets hot early, he puts up his points, then, yeah, Russ will probably do his thing. But just over his last few games, quarterback 18, 14, 11, 18, 12, not bad, but just a cap ceiling, 23 quarterback 23, though he has not cracked 20 points since week four. So the ceiling just feels a little capped. I'd rather go with a guy, you know, a lot of questions I've been getting is like Jordan Love versus Russell Wilson. Well, Jordan Love has three straight of 20 points. Russell Wilson also ranked ahead of Jared Goff, who, yeah, I get that he has not looked great real life-wise. Kind of the opposite narrative here is Goff has been careless with the ball, and yet he's still been putting up top eight quarterback numbers week in and week out. So uh, those guys both ranked below Russell Wilson. It's more so like, yeah, I'd rather go to those guys. I'd rather go to Sam Howell. Um, I, I get why you might have to start Russ. And there's a nice floor of about 14 points there. But I really think this, the cap ceiling makes me rather pivot to a guy like Jordan Love if both of them, if that's what you're considering here. Talking Hail Marys, and you're talking Kenny Pickett 
going against oh, yeah. Arizona, nineteen percent roster. I got one word for you: gross. Yeah. Oh, it's hideous. And I will say too, if Derek Carr, if Olave ends up playing again, that matchup against the Lions defense, four of the last five quarterbacks they faced have had top eight fantasy days. The only one who didn't was Jimmy Garoppolo. So I, I think if if Derek Carr has his weapons, that's certainly my preferred hail mary and streamer. But for right now, Kenny Pickett, nineteen percent rostered. They, it's more so betting on the fact that the first game without Matt Canada, they had 400 yards. That's the first time in 44 games since he called plays that they've had 400 yards of offense. And right before he got hired, they had 400 yards as well. So it's just like the most ridiculous streak that right before Canada and right after him, bam, the offense looks so, so much better. Everybody seemed just looser, happier, excited to be there. And it was a career high day with 278 yards for Kenny Pickett, no touchdowns. So I get that he didn't get there, there, but a healthy 8.4 yards per attempt. This was a guy that could push the ball down the field in college, had an amazing preseason. We've seen these glimpses. So I still think there's something in there. And I understand again, Tommy DeVito has more multi touchdown. Yeah, that's right. One career game for Kenny Pickett with multiple touchdowns. But what better time than the presence? It's kind of like what we talked about with Deontay Johnson having the longest streak, not having a touchdown since Big Ben on that Thursday night game. And boom, we, we saw it then the race. I think this is the week we see Kenny Pickett snap that streak, have multiple touchdowns. No defense is more generous as a whole in terms of giving up fantasy points. A lot of them do come to the running backs against Arizona, but they are just a abysmal defense as a whole. So this, if, the, if yeah, they're moving the ball well, and those touchdowns just regress to instead of going to Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, Kenny Pickett has two to three in addition to 250 to 300 yards. I think he could be a really decent plug and play as bad as the track record has been. He only has one career game of top 12 numbers, which is just, oh, not I, right. but yeah, it, it's bad. It's, but we're talking about a hail Mary in a week with six quarterbacks on by what can yeah. we do? <laughs> what is up? You fantasy wolf. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.